In this video, we're going to take a look at how rectilinear motion is used to analyze some problems. Rectilinear motion uh, represents the motion of an object on a coordinate line. And we're going to use the s-axis to represent the position of the object. So we're going to take a look at position, velocity, and acceleration. So starting with position, uh, the particle can move in either direction, and it's denoted by s of t, where s represents the position of the particle on the line at time t. Now the graph is called the position versus time graph. If that position, the s, is greater than zero, then we're going to say that the particle is right of the origin. And if s is less than zero, we're going to say the particle is left of the origin. So if the origin is here in the middle, then this would be our right side, and this would be our left side. Now, the next is velocity. The velocity is the rate of change of position with respect to time. And we're measured in meters per second or feet per second or some kind of distance per time. So the average velocity, we're going to call it v with an under subscript av8g, meaning average. That's going to be our final distance minus our initial distance. And all of this is going to be divided by our final time minus our initial time. Now we can abbreviate this into our symbolic notation to say it's s of b minus s of a, all divided by b minus a, where b and a are times. Now if I want to find the instantaneous velocity, I'm just going to call it v. That's the same as finding the derivative of the position. So if we recall, we can actually find the instantaneous velocity by finding the limit of this average. So we can say the limit as b approaches a of s of b minus s of a divided by b minus a. But now that you know your derivative rules, we can actually just find the derivative very quickly and then plug in the numbers to find the instantaneous velocity. Now remember that the instantaneous velocity um, is a slope of the tangent line to the position versus time curve. So if the object is stopped, the velocity is going to equal zero. If the object is moving to the right, we say that the velocity is greater than zero. And in that case, the s, the position, is increasing. If the object is moving to the left, we're going to say that the velocity is less than zero, and then the s is decreasing, or my position is decreasing. Okay. Uh, next we have acceleration, and acceleration is the velocity, sorry, is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And it's measured in meters per second squared or feet per second squared or some kind of distance per time squared. And remember that this is how quickly a particle picks up or loses speed. So average acceleration can be calculated by the final velocity minus our initial velocity. all divided by our final time minus our initial time. And just like with the average velocity, I can abbreviate this by V of B minus V of A, all divided by B minus A. So to abbreviate this, we can say that the instantaneous acceleration A 
is the derivative of velocity. Or you can say it's actually the second derivative of the position. And if I want to calculate it using limits, I would be finding the limit of this average acceleration. So remember the instantaneous acceleration, this time is a slope of the tangent line, so notice it's also the tangent line, but this time it's going to be to the velocity versus time curve, as opposed to the position versus time curve. So just to reiterate here and summarize, so velocity we can say is a change in position divided by the change in time, whereas acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. Okay, so on the graph, if the velocity is constant, um, we'll notice that the acceleration is zero. If the velocity is increasing, our acceleration is gonna be greater than zero. And if the velocity is decreasing or getting smaller and smaller, our acceleration is going to be less than zero, meaning that is going to be negative. Now there's one more thing that we need to take a look at, and that is speed. So speed is different from velocity. It tells how fast a particle is moving without regard to direction. So it's always going to be a positive value. So to find the speed, we can actually take the absolute value of our velocity. So the average speed is going to be our total distance divided by our total time. Now to analyze it a little bit further, we can say that the speed is increasing if the acceleration is greater than zero, so if it's positive, and the velocity is positive. So we're speeding up, our, so our velocity is positive and our acceleration is positive. If the acceleration is less than zero and our velocity is also less than zero, that means we're gonna be increasing as well. But this time it'll be in the increasing in the negative direction. So we're gonna say the speed is increasing when A and V, acceleration and velocity, have the same sign. Okay. The speed is going to be decreasing if acceleration is positive, but then our velocity is less than zero. Or if acceleration is less than zero, but then our velocity is greater than zero. So in these two cases, the acceleration and the velocity have opposite signs. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. As Calvin and Phoebe elope in the hot air balloon, Phoebe decides to throw her bouquet of flowers to the watching onlookers on the ground. The bouquet is thrown from the balloon in such a way that it is s meters above the ground t seconds after being thrown as modeled by the function s of t equals negative 4.9 squared plus 32t plus 85. So the first question is how high is the balloon when the bouquet is thrown? So when the bouquet is thrown, that time is zero. So we're gonna take a look at the position at a time of zero. So I can see that when I plug in time is zero, I'm gonna get 85. So the balloon is 85 meters. Um, part B, find the velocity at time t. So we have the position. So the velocity is simply going to be the derivative of the position. So this is going to be negative 9.8 t plus 32. So now that we have the velocity, part C says what's the velocity of the bouquet after two seconds? We can find v of 2 and plug in the number 2 for the time. So this will give us negative 9.8 times 2 plus 32, which gives us 12.4 meters 
per second. All right, um, question D. What is the maximum height reached by the bouquet? So if you think and imagine, so we have this bouquet, and we can see that this is a parabola. It uh, has a power of 2. And the first, uh, the initial coefficient is negative. So we know that this parabola goes up and then down. So the maximum height is this point up here. And at that point, the velocity is 0. So what I can do is now set my velocity to be 0. And this will be negative 9.8t plus 32. And then I'm going to solve for t. So in this case, t is 32 over 9.8, which is approximately 3.265 seconds. And to find the height, I'm going to now take that time, which it takes 3.265 seconds to reach that height, and then I'm going to plug that into my position equation. And I'm going to get 137.245 meters. Now make sure that when you plug it in to use the 32 over 9.8 um, so that it's not rounded so that it gives a more exact answer. All right, part E, it says find the time when the bouquet's position is decreasing. Now to do it formally, we should actually, I'll show you what the steps would be. So we first want to find use our velocity, which is negative 9.8t plus 32. We want to find out where the bouquet stops. Now in this, or where the particle stops. And in this example, it only stops at the time velocity is zero. Okay, now we already solved this. So I'm just going to do this, rewrite this really quickly. And we know that that's going to be at time 32 over 9.8, which is 3.265 seconds. So drawing a number line at 3.265 seconds, what we want to do is test to see what's happening before 3.265 and after. So I'm going to plug in a number. Let's say we plug in the number 1. I'm going to plug it into the velocity here. And I can see that it's going to be negative 9.8 times 1 plus 32. So that's going to be a positive number. When I plug in a bigger number than 3.265, such as 4, and I plug it into here, negative 9.8 times 4 plus 32, I notice is going to be a negative number. So this will be negative. That means that the velocity increases and then it decreases. Therefore, the time when the bouquet is position is decreasing is actually when the velocity is negative. So that time is greater than 3.265 seconds. Now this brings us to the last question here. Find the time or times when the bouquet speed is decreasing. So if you recall, the speed is decreasing when the acceleration and the velocity have opposite signs. So what we need to do is now find our acceleration. So I'm going to take the derivative of our velocity and that's going to be negative 9.8. So if I plotted this on a number line, so this is actually going to be zero. No matter where on this number line I go, the acceleration is always going to be negative 9.8. So all of this is going to be negative. So if I match my negative signs and my positive signs with the graph above, so here and here, in this section here, I can see that my velocity and my acceleration have opposite signs. Whereas in this section here, my velocity and my acceleration have the same sign. So here, the speed is actually increasing, whereas in this red part, the speed is actually decreasing. So we're gonna say that the speed is decreasing from a time of zero to 3.265 seconds.